In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to solve a bungee jumping problem using energy. So this is really any type of elastic or spring type object where you have something attached to it, you release it, it's going to fall down, it's going to stretch, it's going to oscillate back and forth. So the specific scenario we're looking at is a 50 kilogram bungee jumper who jumps from 50 meters above a river from a 15 meter bungee cord. How close does he get to the river? So I'm going to briefly talk about how you would find a K value for some sort of elastic cord or spring. So if you were to uh, experimentally find a K value, the spring constant for some sort of spring or elastic band, what you would do is you would put force on the Y axis and then X, which is the amount that the spring or elastic cord is stretched along the X axis. Um, what you would do is you would just go ahead and graph those and the force would just be hanging several masses and taking the mass times G, which is 9.8, and then using various masses to see how much it would stretch. It would stretch a certain amount. And then if you found the slope, the slope would give you your K value, which is the spring constant. All right, so let's say we conduct that experiment. We run all of our numbers, we get a slope, and then we get a K value of 450 newtons per kilogram. Okay, so in our scenario for this um, bungee cord, um, it's gonna be 450 newtons per kilogram. All right, so how we're gonna analyze this is we have our system, which is the person, um, the bungee cord, the earth, and that's pretty much it. So that would mean that all of the initial energy should equal all of the final energy unless it appears that work is being done on the system, okay? and that the person is either losing or gaining energy in some form. Um, I don't see anything in the question that refers to any type of like air resistance or heat loss or anything like that. So I'm just gonna assume that energy is conserved within my system and then all of the initial energy is equal to all of the final energy. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and expand this um, little formula out into all the very specific types of energy and then cross out the ones I don't need. All right, so I have the gravitational potential energy, the elastic potential energy, and the kinetic energy before and after. So I'm gonna ask myself, is the person above the ground initially before they jump? The answer is yes. So I'm gonna keep the gravitational potential energy. Is the bungee cord uh, stretched at the beginning of the problem? It is not, so I don't have any elastic potential energy loaded up. Before you jump, is there any movement or motion? There is not, no kinetic energy. Now afterwards, we're jumping and we're seeing how close they get to the river. So we're wondering uh, what happens when the bungee cord is stretched to its maximum position. At its maximum position, it's gonna reach an instantaneous velocity of zero, so I definitely won't have this kinetic energy. Is the bungee cord stretched? It is definitely stretched because it's stretched to its maximum displacement. And is it above the ground? Well, we're gonna assume that the person doesn't reach exactly a height of zero. So yes, they have some height off the ground. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and expand these types of energy one more time into their actual um, formulas and then place the numbers I know into them and I'll see if I have any unknowns. And if so, um, we'll go ahead and figure those out.
All right, now I've plugged in all the values that I have from the problem. I have my MGH from our initial conditions. And then as I'm losing some of that gravitational potential energy, it is changing into elastic potential energy. Now, a couple things I don't know is we wanna find out how close does he get to the river. So I really don't know the person's height above the river or else I'd already know the answer. So I don't know this final H value and I don't know how much the elastic cord is being stretched. If I knew either of those numbers, there wouldn't really be anything to solve for. So it kind of seems like I have too many unknowns at this point. So I'm looking at the problem and I see that they started from here. And all the way down to a height of zero where the river is at is a total of 50 meters. Now, so far, all I know is that the bungee cord is 15 meters. So when it is all the way down and completely, um, I don't want to say stretched out, but it's, it doesn't have any more slack, but it isn't being stretched. So it loses its slack and it's about to get stretched. But when it's like laying loosely with no tension from the person pulling on it, it is 15 meters. So once that cord comes down straight, it's gonna go down 15 meters. Now from there, all I know is that it's gonna stretch a certain amount, but like I said, I don't know how much it's gonna stretch and I don't know how high the person is off the ground. That's actually what I'm looking for to get my final solution. But I do know it is going to get stretched some. So that bit that it's getting stretched is what we call our x for the one half kx squared um, equation for the elastic potential energy. So what I can do is since I'm sort of stuck at the moment and I have multiple unknown variables, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my h over here in terms of what I know. And I know that this height right here we'll call this HF for like our final height, is going to be the total of 50 minus whatever the 15 plus X is, okay? So once again, it's the total of 50 for the entire distance and then a minus this distance right here, which is 15 plus X, 15 is the length of the cord and then X is the stretch that we're eventually gonna figure out. So I'm gonna go ahead and write 50 minus fifteen plus x. Okay, so fifty minus fifteen plus x. Okay, now that actually looks pretty good. It doesn't look nice and neat just yet, um, but I do have just an x, the amount of stretch of my bungee cord as my only unknown variable. Um, so. Um, that means I'm in pretty good shape to be able to solve for my unknown variable. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up these numbers a little bit and see what we could do with them. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up my setup a little bit. I just multiplied these th three and I got 24,500. Um, I also uh, multiplied the 50 times 9.8 and that came out to 490, but I still have in parentheses here, the 50 minus 15 plus X, which is representing this HF right here. And then plus, and then one half times 450 is 225 and then times the X squared. Okay, so now we have a quadratic to solve for. There's multiple ways you can go about this. You can use a quadratic formula. You can set it equal to zero and graph it and find the two intersection points. One of the intersection points is gonna be negative and one is gonna be positive. The positive one is gonna be your answer. Um, so it kind of depends on which route you wanna take. 
Okay, now if I take this part, which actually looks a little bit messy, I can distribute this 490 over to um, the 50, to the 15, and to the X, and then I can sort of like clean it up one more time and then use that. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of condense this down a little bit and then see what my final setup looks like before I solve for X. All right, so all I did so far was I just took this 490 and distributed it to all three of these things. Okay, it actually worked out sort of nicely because 490 times 50 is 24,500. So if I subtract 24,500 from both sides, that works out nicely because I actually get rid of everything on that side. And then from there, I have zero on the left side and that equals, and then I just basically have all of this stuff left over here. So I have um, my negative 7,350. And then again, my negative 490, because we have the minus in front of here. So you have to distribute that out. So then minus 490x, and then plus my 225x squared. Okay, so like I said, uh, you can go ahead and graph that and take a look at the two points where it intersects the x-axis, or you can go ahead and use a quadratic formula. If you have a higher level calculator, you can just have your calculator solve it for you. And then your x comes out to be 6.91 meters. Okay, so remember, although you did a lot of work to find out how much it stretched, that actually isn't your final answer because it says how close does he get to the river. So that X, we want to just pop that in um, over here to this setup. Okay, so that X is represented this X right here. So I can go ahead and put equals 6.91 over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 15 plus 6.91 and then subtract that number from 50. So if I take 50 minus the sum of 15 plus 6.91, then I get my final answer of 28.09 meters. All right, so to sum things up, uh, like I said, uh, in some cases, you might be experimentally finding the K value. In that case, you would just use MG multiple times, hang different masses from your cord or your spring. And with those various forces, you'll get a certain amount of stretch out of the spring or cord. So you measure how much it stretches from its equilibrium position, find a slope, you find a K value. So I just came up with a K value of 450 for this particular problem, um, which pretty much just came out of nowhere. I just made that up. Um, so I have a K value of 450 for my bungee cord problem. Now, depending on what you're solving for, a lot of people might say, well, what about like the length of the person? Um, so in, the way that I solve this, I just pretend like the person was just like a, a single particle and that there wasn't any specific length to the person. So if you are dealing with a situation where you have to include the height of the person or the, the height of the object that's connected to the spring of the cord, uh, definitely do so. Um, but in this specific case, I did not. I just ignored it and just kind of treated it like a, like a specific like particle point. Um, so now we have our initial energy and our final energy. Like I said, if there's no um, work being done um, on or by the system, we can say that all of our energy is conserved within our system. All the initial equals the final energy. Really, the key is having a lot of unknowns and realizing that this height right here is your total of 50 minus the 15 plus X, X being the stretch of your cord. And as we did over here, just expanding out all of your formulas, um, kind of condensing your numbers as much as possible, and then either using the quadratic formula and then graphing, and then finishing off with this last final step in right over here, doing our 50 minus 15 plus our 6.91, which we eventually got over here, and figuring out our final solution. 
So I hope that was helpful and helping you understand and solve a bungee jumping type problem. Thank you for watching and listening.